Welcome back. Taking a full look at weather now. Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianka on this Thursday. You give us an update. It is drought update Thursday. Something to get excited about, I suppose. Um, especially since like the drought update hasn't had any bad news in it for like it's more than a good. year now. So we celebrate it when we can, right? Exactly. So here's, here's a look at where the state currently stands as far as the drought is concerned. And as we see across the region, well, we're just seeing the base map, so no colors on it, with one small exception that's in far southeastern California, where there's one small area of the state considered to be abnormally dry. That is 1.2% of the state's area. Of course, locally we have been drought free since last spring, and this is not going to change. We're not going to see development of the drought during the summer or even fall months. Maybe if we get a couple months into the winter and it hasn't started raining, we might see it tick up, but I don't think we'll see any change to this map locally anyway until December at the earliest, and I hope we don't. We may not if it rains, right? So that's some good news. As far as rain in the future, well, we're kind of out of our rainy season. We typically don't see any rain this time of year. That's why we don't expect droughts to develop. We're not counting on any rain to fall in June, July, or August because it usually doesn't. That doesn't mean we don't get something every once in a while, but typically late June, early July is the driest part of the season outside of our coastal drizzle, which by the way, we had some of this morning on the Monterey Peninsula. You might've woken up to wet roadways, but the weather pattern is usually pretty quiet. We don't get rain because the storm track is way off to the north. We see the jet stream coming into the Pacific Northwest and we're stuck in between all of these subtropical circulations. This is common in this part of the world. Uh, we don't get a lot of movement in this part of the world, especially farther to the south, right? But, you know, the summertime, it migrates a little farther north. We do have an area of low pressure, and it is bringing showers and thunderstorms to the Four Corners region. And actually, it's getting picked up into that upper level flow and will be zapped out of here. In the meantime, tomorrow, high pressure briefly builds in. This is going to warm us up tomorrow. Um, and then it kind of evens back out as the trough way to our north starts to dig farther down into California. So we'll have a brief warm up inland tomorrow and then we'll start to cool down a little bit. But on the coast, it might be a different story. With that said, because the storm track is digging a little bit farther to the south, it's going to start generating some wind. We'll start to see that as early as tomorrow, but this, the gustiest day is probably going to be on Sunday uh, as this trough passes by. So I'm expecting some wind this weekend, maybe a little bit of drizzle again on Sunday or Monday as the trough passes by. We're it's just hard to get rain this time of year outside of, you know, if the monsoon starts going crazy or if there's a tropical system that comes up. Nothing like that in the cards right now. We're just getting close to an upper level system to the north, which could help generate some extra drizzle next week or this weekend anyway. But uh, ultimately, I don't think it's going to be super cold. These last couple days will probably be the coolest in the forecast. I think we're going to warm up on the coast after this because we'll have drier air coming in. It's not the typical setup where we're sitting very close to a ridge and you have that direct onshore flow. We've got a lot of movement to our north. So that's going to keep things moving and we won't get that stable marine layer type of day that we've had the last couple of days. So feature track overnight is going to show low clouds and fog filling in the valleys, but heading into the afternoon hours tomorrow, we start to clear out. So unlike today where we sat in the clouds for all day long for most areas, uh, tomorrow we'll see a general decrease in clouds starting late morning and probably continuing into the afternoon. You may be completely cloud free in the bay by tomorrow afternoon, which will be a nice change, certainly. But again, the winds will pick up out of the northwest. Could be a little gusty at times on the exposed coast, um, but the stronger winds are actually still coming here in the next few days. Let's talk about temperatures tomorrow. We're going to take you up into the Santa Cruz Mountains to start off with. and. Well, it's going to be quite warmer tomorrow. 80s in the San Lorenzo Valley, Scotts Valley, mid 70s up at the summit, down on the coast, beaches, mid 70s tomorrow, looking pretty nice on the north side of the bay with that northwest flow coming in. On the east shore of the bay, low 70s on the north, mid 60s in the south, you'll have that trajectory off the water, which will keep you cooler. Salinas getting closer to normal, Gilroy Hollister back in the 80s tomorrow. You know, we're like 2102 in Gilroy a couple days ago. Then the last couple days have been chilly, and now you're back on the warm side. On the peninsula, low to mid-60s tomorrow, 65 in Monterey. Pretty seasonable day as far as temperatures are concerned. But you'll have some sunshine in the afternoon and some wind coming in off the water. And then down south, we'll see highs in the 70s and 80s nearest the coast, but 90s farther away. So there is some heat hiding up in the mountains there. About 98 in Bradley tomorrow afternoon. Looking at that seven-day forecast, temperatures on the coast actually look like they're going to stabilize. Um, I 
I had us a little bit cooler initially, but I've warmed us up looking at some of the longer term models. That northwesterly flow of Santa Cruz especially is going to be pretty nice here for the next week or so with this northwest flow. It's really just going to stay that way. With that said, there's a weak system again passing to the north Sunday into Monday, which could generate a little drizzle. The strongest winds will be on Sunday as that passes by. And we're talking 30, 35 miles per hour, certainly possible in some areas. So we'll be a little bit gusty. Uh, then early next week's looking warm. Inland areas will see a little bit of a cool down in the coming days as the trough passes by, but still seasonable. Uh, and then you're heading back up next week. In fact, we could be looking at some heat by the end of the week. And Veronica accidentally left some chewing.